Hi, my name's Phil. Alright, so we're going out politics and after the chaotic second wave heralding scenes around the country in the last week, I'd like to discuss the frankly absolute shambles that is our country's government right now. Uh, when we're ignoring the advice of scientists, medics and now senior police officers in a way that is not just making us look foolish to the wider world, but actively making us more foolish. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, first of all, before I begin, can I just point out where we are as a country now? So, this is the front page of the Mail on Sunday from yesterday. Of course, when it was Sunday. It is apparently a pitch to prove to the country that Boris Johnson is fit and well to lead. We're told it's a photo of him doing a press-up, as if that is somehow a qualification for leading the nation. I mean, President Roosevelt, for example, wasn't much good at press-ups, by all reports, but he's generally regarded as being pretty good as a national leader in a time of crisis. But the thing is, I saw that image and then had to wonder aloud, how do we know he's doing a press-up? I mean, what if Johnson just fell down drunk and was struggling to get up again? I'm doing a press-up, he cried. I'm doing a press-up. As he vainly tried to haul his carcass off the floor. I haven't fallen down. It was on purpose. But let's say it really was a press-up. I mean, seriously? We're on the middle of, well, I hope we're in the middle of the most serious threats to British lives in my lifetime. Potentially even more lethal than the Tory austerity that David Cameron began. By all measures, we are one of the worst performing developed nations in the world in handling this. Uh, despite having more natural advantages than most, for example, we're an island nation, we have more control than others to control our borders if we chose to, but we didn't choose to, and we had more time to prepare than many others as well. Polling increasingly shows an overwhelming proportion of the population dissatisfied with the government's handling, as thousands, well, a thousand Britain each week are continuing to die, which means thousands are knowing someone personally who has died from this, uh, to say nothing about the suffering from uh, a lack of health care for other ailments, rising unemployment and the compounded economic impact of a no-deal Brexit that nobody voted for, but the Brexiteers seem to think they planned all along. And against this background, our Prime Minister the one who's supposed to stand up and say, here's what we're going to do, said, right, gather round everyone, gather round, this is the plan, and then promptly fell on the floor and lifted himself off it a bit. That's it, but that's the plan. Look at me, look at how great I'm leading, I'm raising myself slightly off the floor. Ooh, a peanut. And the Mail on Sunday put it on their front page. Their front page. This was headline news on a Sunday. Sunday's the day when big stories come out. It's your, big, it's your big day of the week for selling lots of papers. That's what they went with. And see, this channel is a little bit funny for this because half my audience are based in the UK and the rest naturally outside the UK. So half the people watching this will be laughing. And the other half may begin to laugh and then realised that we are actually trapped on an island with this dangerous nutter. And how could even the most optimistic of observers possibly think that things won't get much worse over the second half of 2020? And, of course, going into 2021, when we were already a bit nervous at the start of this year, never mind at this point, very predictable reports were emerging this weekend that senior police officers had warned the government not to lift the lockdown in the way that they had. I say predictable because a few weeks ago when they started changing the regulations to be easing the lockdown, you know, the police were saying then that the regulations were unpoliceable. They've tried to painstakingly explain to ministers that you police by public consent. They tried to point out the consequences of lifting it in the way they did and have been reportedly, according to police commissioners, brushed off by government ministers. Um, you know, and, and under any circumstances, of course, this was going to be tough. But British police are particularly badly resourced compared to other countries as well. The Home Secretary Priti Patel was yesterday doing a pointless interview where she said that she would be making sure that the police were properly resourced 
and the pointless interviewer failed to point out that the government had chopped nearly 50,000 staff in the police force and 600 police stations since coming to power, including specifically a loss of 21,000 police officers. Now, even the promise of more police, which was one of their government uh, manifesto planks for the general election, I mean, that won't materialise for some time. It will represent only very inexperienced officers because that's what you're going to be when you first qualify, but still represents a net loss of police officers in terms of sheer numbers to say nothing of the expertise that you cannot get without time. And, and, and that, again, is not even talking about the other resources that they aren't even pretending to raise back up again. And so the scenes over the last week were entirely predictable. Crowded beaches, vast hordes of people overwhelming local public services that couldn't hope to cope. And they were told all this. Illegal house parties. I mean, there was one of those over the street from me on Friday. And the police can do nothing. Nothing at all. Boris Johnson said he trusted the common sense of the British public to get us through this and then was predictably blaming people for not social distancing after the scenes from last week. He put all this in place and then when people went out, when he said, go out and enjoy yourself, and when they went out and enjoyed themselves, he went, you're not distancing. You're not distancing. Even though he confused the distancing rules himself earlier in the week. And we haven't even seen the peak of this chaos because the pubs are reopening this coming weekend, this Saturday, the weekend, for goodness sake, not even midweek to try and limit the damage. I mean, police were saying, can you not at least do it midweek? The only slight silver lining from my point of view is that the clouds are forecast to be a little bit grey this weekend, which maybe will blunt the nightmare scenario a bit. Because the issue is, because you might say, well, we're coming up to summer anyway, and, and at some point it would have been a hot weekend and all the rest of it. But there's, you're going to expect a surge with lots of people who wanted to go to the pub and haven't been able to. I don't understand why they can't just buy beer from Tesco and drink it at home, whatever. There's some reason why they want to go to the pub. Um, and there may be reasons. I'm not trying to disparage that, but there may be reasons. But whatever it is, there's going to be a surge of people going because it's the first time they've been able to do so for some time. Uh, absolute nightmare to put it at the weekend. And and we knew he was going to do this because it's been clear from the start that what he wants to do is he wants the lockdown gone. He never wanted it in the first place. Same with, you know, the people in his party. But he doesn't want the blame for the consequences. Now, we mustn't let him get away with this because he wanted to be prime minister. He asked the British public to give him majority so that he had the power to influence our lives for the better. That was his pitch. You give me a majority and I then will have the power to do all these things. So he was given that majority. He has that power. He doesn't now get to say that he's unable to control the situation. If that majority and that power isn't enough for him to actually govern, he can step aside and let someone else do it who says that they can. Keir Starmer offered to do that week before last and polling now has more of the public behind Starmer as Prime Minister than Johnson. Not that that's a realistic prospect for some years. Of course, the best we can hope for is that the Conservative MPs increasingly look upon their leader as like acting like a drunk uncle with despair and decide that he needs to go home sooner rather than later. Because although this tomfoolery might work politically on their remaining supporters in the short term, you know, they are still quite numerous. Um, surely they've got to see that this is just storing up long term hurt for their credibility because what's happening right now is not going to make the situation better it's going to make it worse they surely must see that I, I don't get how they can't they are presiding over a dreadful outlook before the next election international isolation and humiliation economic hardship mass unemployment a health service on its ass and the prime minister's response was to lie on a carpet get rid of him it's not going to get any better. Get rid of him now. But anyway, there we go. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to subscribe to support the channel further, please also click the uh, Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.